Hey, you guys, welcome back to FedBiz Exchange. I'm Michelle Brown, your coach and your mentor. In this video, I want to talk to you guys about your bid solicitation checklist. A lot of you guys write to me and you tell me you're ready, you're all set up to win government contracts, but then you say, what do I do next? What you do next is you start bidding. If you've done everything that I taught you to do in the beginning, now it's time for you to start bidding. You can't win if you don't bid. It's as simple as that. And if you luck up and get a contract through someone else, it won't continue to happen. So you got to have a checklist. You have to follow the process over and over. The more seeds you plant, the more you win. So let's get into it. Before we get started, I want to let you guys know I'm holding a free live training, Bid to Win Government Contracts. You can't win if you don't know how to bid. Click on the link in the comment section to hold your seat. Now, if you can't attend training, that's fine. You can click on the next link to download my bid checklist. I look forward to seeing you guys there. And if you want to understand what it takes for you to learn how to bid, I'm going to review every step on that checklist in this free training. I look forward to seeing you there. So in my training next week, my free training, Bid to Win, I will talk to you about each one of these steps I'm about to review with you. Number one, you need to read and reread the solicitation instructions. That is key. You need to download my bid hit list so that you can check off the things that you need to do to first decide is this bid right for you. You need to write down your questions and look for the Q&A session if they have one. If not, you can ask the contracting officer questions, but I'll review that with you. But key to winning is reading the basic instructions. And I say basic because a lot of people think it's complicated in those instructions, but I'm going to show you next week how they're not complicated. All you need to do is decide, can I do this? Can I do this? And can I do this? And then you're on to making a decision about bidding. Number two, one of the more fun things to do is for you to make a cover page template and give information about your company and also the information from the bid. You have to put that on the front page. This template you will be able to use over and over again. All you do is just change the information no matter where the bid comes from. But this is the exciting part because you get to give the government a package with your logo, with your design, with your colors, or even if you don't have that, you can simply create one by using one of my templates. So here's number three inside the solicitation package. This is where you put all the juicy stuff. This is where the decision will be made. So a you have to complete a 1449. That is the cover page from the government. It looks like a form. It is a form. It's called the 1449 form. Most of it is completed by the government, but there's a section or two or three areas where you have to put in your information and I show you how to do that. Also pricing. Pricing is a big deal. You got to figure out your pricing strategy before you start bidding, meaning you need to have your relationships built. If you know what you're going to do, you have to know where you're going to get the service from the subcontractor or the manufacturer. And then you need to, if you do what I teach you to do, when you did your research, you look to see if those products or services were out there and you started getting pricing. I'll talk to you about that in the free training bid to win next week. A description of the product or service offering. A lot of people think that just because the government asked you for something, when you bid, they forget to put a clear paragraph or statement telling the government 
You ask for this, this is what I'm giving you. Don't assume that they know. You don't want them to have to figure that part out. So you tell them and explain what you're giving them, even if it is exactly the same. Past performance. Past performance is not as big of a deal as people try to make it seem. However, if it is something you cannot get around, then you move on to the next bid. But most of the time, to be honest, there's no past performance issue. Pricing most of the time is more important than past performance. And if you need past performance, I can give you ideas about how to create your own past performance. Also, if this is a product, you need to include pictures, you need to include technical specifications, who the manufacturer is, where it came from. I talked to you about that when I talked about the do's and don'ts, when I talked about how to work with manufacturers, distributors, and suppliers in my videos. Also, you will need something very important, your reps and certs. Most of you probably don't know what this is. This is a package, your certification that shows everything about you and your company when you signed up through SAM. You will need to keep a copy of that because most of the time, 99% of the time, you will need to present your reps and certs and attach it to your bid solicitation. Even if they don't ask for it, submit it anyway. Number four, check your checklist. That means go back to your My Bid checklist to check off everything to make sure that you've done everything as part of the package because you can miss something. On your checklist, you should also remember to go back and look at the instructions in the solicitation to make sure you didn't miss anything. I do it and I'm very experienced. You know why I do it? Because I have so much going on. Yes, I'm very focused when I'm bidding, but I have made mistakes and forgotten, for example, to attach my reps and certs. We're all human, we make mistakes, but that could cost you a win. So check your checklist, make sure you got everything in place exactly as the contracting officer wants it. 